Good evening, it's Monday evening, Monday the 29th, I think. Is it the 29th? It is. Yep, bank holiday Monday. I've been at Mum's again. And uh, I did exactly what I said I would do. I've, well, I've got most of the Apollo suspension bike done. I say most because the gears have been an absolute pain in the fucking ass. I'm just sign into this. As you can probably tell, I upgraded this to Windows 10 today. And it's actually working a bit better. Firefox seems to be more stable on Windows 10 anyway. Yeah, so yeah it's working all right that's not supposed to be changing that fast anyway this is the box of bits I took out this morning and I've sort of filled it <laughs> this I didn't realize I actually had <laughs> um, it's on a, was on a bike frame that Mr. Biggles gave me. I didn't think it actually had the um, three-speed shifter still attached to the handlebar, but I was just, I was actually looking for something else, and I thought I'd uh, just double-check the handlebar, and there it is. So that saved me a job going in the shed tomorrow. I shouldn't need to, I don't think. Um, a bunch of cars as well. There's also some Lego kicking around in there, but um, one of the holy grails of the Lego world is one of these. This piece alone, I know it doesn't look like it's worth much, you know, it's just a lump of plastic. It's worth anywhere between £10 and over £20. I've actually seen one in Germany which would cost me about £26. And uh, I do have such that needle. That police station has got it. That's actually 100% complete. Now, some people would probably sell it, but I'm not going to sell it because I've got two sets that need it. And I believe this police station needs it. And that house on the back here that can't actually be seen that well needs it. So. That antenna is probably going to go on the house. But uh, yeah, they are an expensive part to far buy. They are rare. In fact, at least under the search words I used, which was just Lego TV antenna, I only found three on eBay in the UK. That's how hard to find them poxy things are. Yeah, I've got some random vehicles in here I love how some I can't remember what part of America it is but I always call it a vehicle <laughs> yeah, some of these um, cars have seen better day, days that's a Cougar Dragster made in England 1970 Biggles took out the ones he wanted for eBay and I just took the rest basically and the Lego there's this, I'm not sure what this is. It used to have hydraulic, or, you know, replica hydraulic bits on it. Dumper, maybe? Big dump truck? Who makes it? It's made in England by Lesney. It's a bit of a clean, I can't read it. There's several others. Little corgi whiz wheels. At first glance, I thought that was Matchbox, because they made one of these as well. Where is it? Lotus Europa. This one's not in too bad a condition. I'm surprised he didn't keep that, actually. What is it? It's a 1972, made in England. Maserati... Bora? I think that says. Yeah, I'm sure that's a B. 
can be pretty awkward to read sometimes. We've got this one. It's got a broken window on the side there, but what's that one? That's a Datsun 128X, made in England, 1973. That one. It's always liked about these. Always gave you the date of manufacture on the bottom. Got a couple of these. I've already got at least one. But uh, I will keep them, especially that one, because that's actually got half decent Red Cross stickers on them. Most of the time they wear off. Uh, they're keepers, or at least one will be. Lego, uh, Lego, Lego. There's bike bits and tools in the bottom. There's big old Corgi Mercedes. It's got a nice big bit of blue fluff in there. Does it mean, does that look bent? Got a headlamp missing. It's pretty corgi still don't uh, make cars like this. But ones in good condition would uh, be a tad expensive on eBay. I've got another large corgi like that. There it is. Buick Regal. I can't remember what TV show this was from. There's no driver for some reason. I don't know where the driver's gone. Does that door open? Oh, the door does open. Maybe the driver fell out then. And why is there a piece of plastic? I don't think that's meant to be in it anyway. It's not in bad condition. Not perfect, but it's still not in bad condition either. I'm definitely going to keep that one. It's a pity that didn't have the glass in it, otherwise that would have been a definite keeper. Uh, that's just a bunch of shit, really. Oh, apart from this one. It's another one I'm surprised he didn't keep, because that is in excellent condition. But I like fire engines, so that stays as well. Uh, little BMW from Majorette, an old one. That'll be a keeper, because I do like my Majorettes. They're a French company, and they do do some quality um, cars. It's actually a pillarless. It's got no B-pillar. It's a BMW 3-litre... I swear that. Yeah, CSI. Got 3.0, so I presume that's 3 litre. Mm. See, I love old BMWs like that. I'm not keen on the modern ones. And I know I usually like to slate and take the piss out of BMW drivers for being the worst drivers out there, but for a change today, um, when I was on my way to Mum's, it was actually in fairly good condition for a Golf. The other ones I've got of this are um, shit compared to that. Yeah, anyway, on our way to Mum's today, we got stuck behind a BMW sticking to the speed limit. So, um, there is, uh, more decent BMW drivers out there than I give them credit for, <laughs> to be honest. I just like to pick on them. I was standing one evening outside Lidl's waiting for Mum, and she was, uh, wanting to go to Lidl's after work and uh, a number of BMWs came past and they were all driving sensibly so oh oh that's an oh what no it's a Hot Wheels Red Lines and it's a vintage one ah oh, man if the front wheels weren't broken that would have been worth a few quid Oh, that's pissed me off. Might still get a few quid for it now, but not as much as it would have been. Oh well. Just some random crap. That's the third one of these I've got now. I could start a fleet of tow trucks. <laughs> Can't remember. Does it give you the make of truck? But the wheels and everything are shadowing it, I can't... That's a Ford. 
that's an American Ford from the look of it. I was thinking Ford A series, which was like the bigger brother to the Mark II Ford Transit, but uh, no, wrong nose on it for an A series. And unfortunately, I've, <laughs> I've got a dinky Mark I Ford Transit van, police Ford Transit van, but it's uh, in quite a sorry state. Uh, I mean, I could go on eBay and uh, buy another one in similar state and uh, make a good one out of the two. But, uh, yeah, this one's... <laughs> poor thing has seen better days. It's got a complete door missing at the back. The hinge is still there. So you could, if you were good enough, solder it back on, a door back on. Um, it needs the glass, it needs repainting, it'll need new decals. And it would need new wheels. Hmm. And let's see how much shitty ones go for on eBay. I've already got one of these as well. Not two now. <laughs> the Volkswagen K70. See, again, I like old Volkswagens like this. I just like older cars. I'm, I really can't get excited about modern cars. Yeah, there's some nice looking ones. But, uh, still, I can't get... I just can't get excited over a lot of modern ones. What the... Well, it's lost both its doors, so it's got air conditioning. What is it? A Volkswagen... 1600TL? Made in England, Lesney products. Does this one give a year? No, it doesn't. But looking at that type of chassis and those wheels, this is later 70s. Uh, I There's two of these, which I presume to be a logging truck with that bracket thing on there. They're not in bad condition. Scammel Contractor. Oh, it's a Scammel. Oh. I could have swore that was American looking at that. Not a, you know, like a Mac or something. Not a... A Scammel. 1971. Yeah, there's another one of those in there. There is. Another one. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if they're worth anything on eBay. Let me just get that thing out of the way. Uh, how about a vintage AA battery? Look at this. Powder has leaked at the end there, but... It's an old EverReady high power battery HP7. You know what? People sell these on eBay. I have seen these for sale. Um, uh, definitely ain't gonna work. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Bin it probably is another one that someone's painted all over. What is it? 1971. A mod rod. That's what that's called. A mod rod. I've got a thing for the 70s Matchbox cars as well. I do like to collect those. What's this one? 1971. Very dirty. Volkswagen Bug. Barger Bug, maybe, from the back? I can't remember. But again, some turnip has painted all over it. You've done it again, haven't you? Yep. Oh! Knocked a different truck off this time. You've knocked my um, thingy truck off. Flatbed lorry, someone's pulled the wheels off. Apart from the front two. The old, uh, old American truck. We've got... No. Just says wildlife truck. 
don't know. Is any Americans that watch me able to uh, ID it? Ford, maybe? I'm thinking Ford. Ford or Chevy? Oh, it's a Ford. It's got Ford written on the back. <laughs> Ford in big bloody letters written right across that tailgate. I don't think it's going to show up on camera. Well, I've answered that question, and it's a Ford of some sort. But yeah, if anyone actually knows what Ford that is, please let me know. Because I have no idea. Yeah. I think I've got another one of these. Actually, I'm pretty certain I have. Yeah, what else have we got? I've got what remains of a cement truck. <laughs> if you're wondering why I kept that, because it's got a good set of front wheels on it, and I know I've got a couple of vehicles that need wheels. So I just kept it for the wheels. A couple of matchbox planes in here. This one's actually in damn good condition. I wonder what I'm doing. I'm trying to get it in the right light so I can actually read it. 1973, I think, or it could be 78. Something like that. 1970-something, anyway. Does it tell me what it is? I've got the cat getting his head in the way as well. No, I'm going to have to get the uh, magnifier out to see that. What about the other one? Not this one, this one looked like a fairly old one as well. Yeah, it is. I can tell from the wheels. Matchbox. Made in England. It's a 385 Starfighter. An F, something or other I can't see. That's 1973 as well. Ah, so that one will be 73. I like this one. Not usually one for planes, but I did like those. Majorette Caravan. We do some caravan racing. <laughs> There's a few bits of Lego in there. Then it's just mainly just the bike parts. I've got no idea why I kept that. A dinky racer there as well. What the Big plastic Volkswagen. Made m m m uh, somewhere beginning with m. It's a pullback, I think. Is it? And that's just one of those where you just keep pushing it to get speed up and then let it go. Right, well that's it. Get off the laptop. You want all the friggin' buttons, you tit. You bloody tit. Oh. I've got the gears to sort out on that stupid bike. The derailleur is pretty much fucked. It's twisted. And the free wheel I stuck on the wheel isn't a lot of good either, so... I'll change all that tomorrow. My friend can't believe that the TV antenna is actually worth that much. It's that one little piece. Yep. My brother asked me if I was going to sell it, and I was like, no, I've got two sets that need one, so I'm actually glad I got one for free. <coughs> that means I haven't got the fork out for it. Right, so tomorrow, I'm actually going to drop a friend of mine a message on Facebook, because uh, I want to get that girl's, or that lady's bike done this week. I've got the wheels in, I've just got to hope they'll hold air, because I don't feel like fixing punctures. Um, really, to get it in working order, all I've got to do is throw the three-speed gear shifter on and cable, which i got here, and uh, pump the tyres up. That is it. <laughs> it's got a rear baggage rack on. Which I know she wanted. Um, she, apparently she just prefers the three speeds to the mountain bike, so... Uh, I'm actually just thinking, you know, straight swap. I'm gonna, I wasn't going to, but I will replace the handlebar. And if I thought of it, I'd have brought the handlebar that I pinched that three speed off of. 
um, with me because that's a decent handlebar. But I might have one in the shed that I can put on it. Uh, not the shed, the outside closet. I hope. Um, pretty certain I've got something out there, isn't it? Anyway, because the one on it is rusty as hell. I don't. I can't change the handlebar stem. I don't have anything better. If I have, it's at Mum's. <laughs> Oh, that is one ass about having bike parts in two different places. I guarantee if I don't have it here, I'll have it at Mum's. And when I want it here, it'll be at Mum's. And if I'm at Mum's doing something, the bits I want are going to be here. So, can't win. <laughs> uh, shouldn't take me too long to do that mountain bike tomorrow. They're locked up downstairs, so I can't show you. Because I ha really haven't got the room up here. I've got two bikes out front to do for friends, uh, so I'm going to aim to get them all done this week. Cat's uh, uh, Custom Trikes has got some bike bits for me to pick up, and she wants them gone a, you know, as soon as possible. Um, the only problem I've got is, as I rely on a lift, and mum works, it's a little bit a tricky. Um, but I'll aim to do that this week as well. So if I can get her racing bike done, I can drop that off at the same time. Uh, if I actually take my bike, I could hang around for a bit as well, and bike home later. Uh, what else do I bring on? Oh, three tyres. And two inner tubes. I pumped up two inner tubes to see if they would go flat, and they didn't. So, my Rally Max, the green one, I've got a replacement front tyre, because the one I put on there is actually crap. And it's got a slow puncture anyway, which is why I bought the inner tubes back. So, I can sort that out maybe tomorrow. Uh, and I bought two um, mountain bike sized road tyres back. I'm going to set them up on a set of wheels. Um, those wheels I wanted to put in my Grey Claud. I haven't done it yet because um, I noticed the front wheel's got a slight buckle in it. But then I remembered it's got disc brakes anyway. <laughs> um, so really, it shouldn't be enough to affect the bike. The only way I can find out is to fit the wheel and go for a ride. If it makes the front end too wobbly, then of course I can't use the wheel. But uh, I could straighten it. It's awkward, but I could straighten it if I need to. Uh, so I was going to put the road tyres on those wheels and have two sets of wheels for the Grey Claude. And one with knobblies on, so I can go off-roading, and one for road use, because I prefer road tyres on the road. I get a lot more speed up and it's a lot less effort to ride. Yeah, so plenty to do. So I may end up going in the shed tomorrow anyway. Uh, and that lady's bike, that's not going to take me long to do. So long as the wheels aren't, or the tyres don't have punctures, it's going to take me. Know, about 10 minutes to fit that. I was actually going to take the cable off, but then I thought, well, why do I need to do that when I can just leave the cable on and fit the whole thing? Because there's no cable on that bike either. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's going to make life a lot easier. That's why I left the cable on. You know, I just figured I'd use the whole unit, so to speak. Because it can be a bit fiddly to get a bloody cable in there. God, the light's crap. There's no Stormy Archer sticker either, but that don't matter. But, uh, I, will I wasn't going to, but I will change the handlebar, because uh, I want to get it looking as uh, respectable as I can. Now, I don't want to swap a rusty bag of shit for uh, a mountain bike. <laughs> that's, just not, that's not going to be fair on them. So, uh, I will get it ready. The brake calipers will have to come off and need to be changed. 
all cleaned. We'll see if they'll clean up because they're rusty as well. Um, but they work. They do work fine. Uh, it's got mud guards. The only thing I'd have to do is possibly fit lights and the front basket from her other bike to this one which I should be able to do a piece of cake shouldn't be an issue um, if I can get her basket to fit on the built in bracket some rally bikes had a basket bracket built into the bike it was welded to the bike and this one's got one uh, so hopefully I can uh, slide it straight onto that I hope if not I'll think of something I'll think of some way to fit the basket on I don't think Biggles has got anything like that now <laughs> and that guy that was interested in all his vintage bike parts has now decided he doesn't want it so he's been listing small job lots of bits up on eBay, which I don't blame him really. Mm -hmm. You reckon they've been selling like hotcakes? Well, that doesn't surprise me either. Right. I'm going to turn the camera off because I'm rambling again. And uh, I should see Mum at some point tomorrow as well. And I've got those pedals to pack and post. I must do that tomorrow. See if Mum will uh, get me a few bits for the freezer. I only really want a bag of sausages. Perhaps a loaf of bread. Because she owes me anyway. <laughs> it's about ten. I think it's ten she owes me. Um she just give me the tenner if she wants. <laughs> Alright, I'm rambling again, so... Uh, thanks for watching, and... Uh, I'll talk to you again at some point tomorrow. Probably tomorrow evening. So, uh, yeah, it'll be tomorrow evening, I expect. So, uh, see you then. Bye-bye. Oh. I think... It's afternoon. Yeah. Yep, just gone. <laughs> yeah, it's another beautiful day. Car park's a bit busy. One thing I forgot to show in yesterday's video was the uh, remains of that wheel axle. There's one half completely sheared. The other half is still in that box. I forgot it was in the bottom of the box. The other half is in here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> That's what happens if you ride a bike with the wheel bearings loose for too long. Or, if you pull wheelies, or you do too many jumps and land on it, especially with the loose wheel bearings that can do that especially on these uh, cheapo budget type bikes because they're not really built for rough and tumble I don't even know why they're built to be honest but never mind um I'm expecting Mum at some point this afternoon. <sighs> I don't know when, and I'm hoping I can uh, at least get this first part of the video done before the batteries decide to go. Uh, da -da -da -da. I have got batteries charged, so it's not an issue. Um, oh, it's a refuse truck. I've got such a distinctive engine sound over here, refuse trucks, garbage trucks for Americans. I really forgot what I was going to say now. Oh yeah, 
A uh, friend of mine on Facebook put a status up. Um, I didn't see it. It hadn't come up in my news feed, which is one issue with Facebook. Um, but he's absolutely right. If you post something positive, whether if you're sharing something positive and happy, you know, like, I don't know, a cute puppy or you're going to do something for charity or something, barely anyone pays any attention to it. As soon as you share bad news or something negative or you have a rant, everybody notices it and comments on it. Because it happens to me as well, so I know exactly what he means. Because I've been told I'm too negative I don't know how many friggin' times now. And that I'm always complaining and whatnot. And, uh, oh, that's it on these tan. Actually, I haven't had that for a while, but probably because I've blocked the people. <laughs> but on these local town groups, I always got told that I was uh, always being too negative and putting things down and whatnot. But every time I shared something positive to these groups, or made a positive comment, that just seems to go completely unnoticed. For some reason, people are just attracted to the negative shit and then complain that you're too negative. <laughs> I just don't understand how that works. Someone explain it to me. Why is it like that? Is it just a Facebook thing? And I'm looking at a post here where someone shared... I'm not actually sure what it is. A food of some sort. <laughs> and uh, there's no likes, no comments, and no shares. But uh, if you find something negative on here, it'll have all sorts of attention. Mm -hmm. Ooh, pardon me. Most owners admit talking to their dogs like they are human, do you? If I had a dog, I would. But I've got a cat. I do with him sometimes. I probably get more sense out of him than I do a lot of humans. <laughs> I know Mum does with her dog. And I do when I'm over there as well. <laughs> Who doesn't? was the other thing. Um, pharmaceuticals. Medication. There's one thing I don't like about the medical industry. And there's a reason why I call it an industry. It's because it's all about making money from the sick. That's all it is. It's not about helping the sick. It's about using the drugs that they've created to help the sick to make a shitload of money. Because they know people will buy it. I mean, get this. The NHS can prescribe you medication that you can also buy over the counter, such as paracetamol and ibuprofen and um, anti-diarrhea pills, etc., but it's cheaper for you to go and buy it over the counter than it is for the NHS to buy such drugs in. Um, and I don't know why that is. I mean, a packet of 16 paracetamol is going to cost you about 20 pence. I don't know what that would be in the US. That would probably be something like 40 cents or something like that. 40, 50 cents depending on exchange rates which seem to vary on a regular basis uh, <laughs> but I can't remember what someone said it actually costs the NHS I mean if you have to pay for your prescriptions because over here if you're working you have to pay for your prescriptions if you're registered disabled or on any form of welfare 
you don't, you're exempt to a degree. Uh, I think that depends what welfare you're on. Um, but what you would get charged for your medications through a prescription from your doctor is actually a lot more than if you went and bought it over the shelf. So, if you just need painkillers, just go buy them over the shelf. <laughs> it's cheaper for you and cheaper for RNHS as well. But that just makes me laugh in the States, you know, like these EpiPen. Something a lot of people need. And it costs, apparently, for a pack of two, according to what I'm reading here, it's 600 bucks. Six hundred bucks for two EpiPen, and it probably cost a very tiny fraction to make those. A very tiny fraction. Yeah, um, you know they've obviously got to recoup costs for manufacturing such things. You know, wages for the developers and whatnot, costs in materials and you know, the general costs of manufacture, but I think 600 bucks is taking the piss, as we would say over here. 600 fucking dollars. Jesus. Gene Wilder, 83, he's now dead. And I actually remember him from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the original one. Um, he was in a few other movies and I can't remember off the top of my head but yeah he played Woody Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory he passed away it was yesterday he passed away good actor may he rest in peace I'm just scrolling through at the minute see if I can see anything else my notifications aren't working on Facebook again well, they are, they're just not loading. In fact, I'll try and load them, this is all I get. <laughs> just a blank list with a little thing spinning around in circles at the top there. That is it. It will work eventually. But every few days or so it does that, and it just gets annoying. That's what I hate about Facebook. They fix the things that are not broken and totally ignore the things that do actually need a bit of attention. You know, sod making the group, the um, site look nice. What's the point in a site that looks nice if there's things broken on it? I think that's it for now because I need to go and use the toilet anyway. There's a surprise, but then again, I haven't been yet. So I'm going to drop a bomb in the toilet. Or drop a deuce, I should say. Drop a bomb. Where the fuck that come from? Right. I'm really not feeling motivated to tackle any bikes today, to be honest. I think I'm just going to have a nice, easy day at home. I'll have a bit of a tidy up in the bedroom, I think. Yeah. Oh, the card reader on my laptop works. I decided to try that last night. Yeah, as far as I can tell, everything works on the laptop. Apart from the webcam and the fingerprint reader. Every time I put my finger on it, it did. the computer made some sort of beep. So I'm not sure if it is working or not. It does something. So perhaps if I had some software on here for the camera, the camera probably does work. Uh, oh, pardon me. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll be back later. <laughs> Just had Jeekins Weir, Victory Housing's contractors, on the phone. They have scheduled. Pardon me. For my, um allocated shed door to be repaired on the 16th of September um, so yeah there's a couple of weeks wait but 
I suppose I've got to get materials and whatnot ready and I don't know, measurements, make a new door up, I don't know. Plus I've got other jobs to do between that as well. Um, but they said that they'd be here between 8 and 9 in the morning, so I need to be up early. So I want to unlock the shed door. And uh, so they've got some room to work, oh, and so my bikes don't get damaged. I'm going to take the bikes out. And uh, the ones on stands I might put round front for the time being. So yeah, that's some good news. Uh, and apart from doing a bit of shopping with Mum, I've just sat here and built this for my Lego town. I'm just detailing it a little bit. Uh, a pizza place with a stove and a cash register, and I'll put a cash register in here and some shelves. That's going to be um, a place to buy motor oil and whatnot. So I've just got to put things in there to simulate bottles and things. Because uh, Octan is Lego's make-believe um, fuel supplier, um, I think is the correct term. You know, like Shell. I mean, back in the day they did a lot of promotional Shell sets. Like that one just over there, and I've got another two on that shelf shell stations and there's even more than that they've done over the years I'm just moving some crap out of my way I've got red brick in my hand and I can't remember where the red brick tub is not that one, it's not that one. Oh, there it is I'll put it over here it's friggin hot now the sun's coming in and I have to close that curtain in fact, no, May, I will. Right. That must have been a, their last phone call of the day, because I've just realised what the time is. It's nearly 5.30. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. I'll get a nice shiny new door. And hopefully I won't paint the fucking thing white. Oh, that's horrible. Not only does white show up the dirt, and obviously doesn't last very long before it needs redoing again, because of that. As soon as the sun hit it, because around about lunchtime, the sun is in the sky up here, and it's just beaming straight down on that shed. And with white paint on there, it's like a, ble a bloody mirror. Ah. I was just going to come in here and make a sandwich, but... Uh, I got some shit to clean up. Oh, that's the other thing I did. I haven't finished it yet, but it's made a difference. Front cables, rear cables, brake cables, that is. Back in the day when they did separate lengths for each brake, they don't do that anymore. They just have one two metre length. I believe is the length, same as a gear cable. Uh, I've got that cable there, which has got a little nipple on either end. It's just one oval for um, cantilever brakes and whatnot. I've got my gear cables all, or my three-speed gear cables, all stacked up there. I think I've got a couple on the floor. I need a longer screw or something in there. Uh, I just thought it would be easier to hang some cables up. I'll probably do the same with those gear cables in there. Just drill a hole in there, pop a long screw into it and uh, hang those up. But it's certainly got these packets out of the way. There's a couple I couldn't hang up because of the, uh, the uh, cardboard bit at the top there had split. I don't know where they are. I laid them somewhere. Oh, I laid them in the top of that. See, I've got that tin there. I could put 
two screws in there and I could hang all the other bloody brake cables in that tin up there as well. I did think about putting the screws in the end here but then I thought it's going to get in the way of the drawers. I don't mind that because it's just that one item to move if I have to but or I could put a screw in that back wall or even if I move those switches Put a screw up there and put all the other brake cables in that tin, all the new ones, up there. That will just free up some room in here as well, and I can get rid of some bloody tins and I'll have some shelf space. I don't know if I'll do that today, though. I'm having a can't be asked sort of day. That's <laughs> why I haven't done any of the bikes. Well, that reminds me, I need to go digging in that cupboard for some Duralia mechs anyway. I need one for the front gears and one for the rear gears. Because, uh... I've got to put a different type, hopefully, on my friend's mountain bike out front. Because we tried to change the crank, and I can't, because I haven't got one small enough. Uh, so it's either find one small enough or change the derailleur because the derailleur mech bolts on through the bottom bracket it doesn't bolt to the frame so I'm going to see if I've got one in my box that will fit on the frame around the frame tube take the one off of the bottom bracket and do away with that and hope I don't need to put a spacer in there for the bottom bracket and uh should be able to um, get another crank on the bike that way. Well, that's the plan. I think I'll be months before I find another one of them. Because that bike is just full of odd sized parts. And the other one I've got to do is that three speed for his mum. I've got a friend on Facebook bitching about being woken up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Which you probably think is a bit of a weird thing to be woken up about, but when you work nights, I think he works nights, it's either nights or he works very, very late, you know, he needs to sleep. So, and I'm guessing he's like told his neighbours and whatnot, and they still do it, so. They're just being general assholes, in my opinion. But, uh, the other thing at the end of the day is they're doing it during daytime hours, so there isn't really a lot that can be done. I really don't afford to get my door done, though. I just wish it was a bit quicker. Never mind. I suppose as they've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes, if not thousands of homes probably, to uh, maintain for Victory Housing. It's just a case of uh, having the time to do it. And as I said, it's not just a quick, you know, come here, quick repair and disappear again in ten minutes. Oops. Um, you know, like when they fixed my extractor fan in the kitchen. That's a relatively quick job. You know, if they had to change a light switch, it's a five minute job, things like that. It's a big repair which requires a lot of time. Uh, according to her on the phone, she said it could be up to about five hours. Can't see it taking that long unless she's going to make the door from scratch while he's here. Because they said nothing about taking any measurements uh, she's got it down as replace door and slider but the sliders you can't <laughs> I mean the door itself is getting past it as well it's fairly rotten along the bottom that's why I've got the extra planks screwed along it I'm surprised they haven't fallen off yet 
but I guess it's from where the rain runs down the door and then just sits at the bottom, doesn't it? And sort of drip off so it's wetter at the bottom a lot more than the top. Well, it has started to rot at the top because the number of times I've had to take that door off its slider to um, reattach the bracket to the top of the door because the screws have just pulled straight out because it's rotten. I actually put four five inch screws in there this last time and it still pulled out so yeah anyway I'm going to turn the camera off because I'm going to clean up that kitchen enough so I can uh, get a bite to eat right I've done a lot I've got Lego trays everywhere which I'm now going to pick up and put away um my shops are done. They're based on a very British, well, a British style to me anyway. I don't know if they do them or did them uh, around the world, but if you go into my town, you'll commonly see buildings just like this. Um, they have the shop on the ground floor, and then above that, they had the living accommodation um, or an extra floor for the shop. You know, whatever they want to use it for. And sometimes they could be quite long and narrow like that, and sometimes they could be wider. And uh, I sort of based them on that, and the idea is just like on a model railway, because I haven't got the room up there and I wanted to fill it with something that looked like buildings, I'm doing it that way. The low profile, that's what they call it, low profile. Uh, my stepdad has actually got some on his railway. And I've, I've never seen it done on a Lego town. But because I'm limited for space, um, that will just add that extra bit of detail along there so it doesn't look as empty. I'm uh, going to stick with that. Anyway. They've uh, been talking about Talk Talk again on the Regenerate North Walsham group. Because apparently they still stand outside the drugstore, and they have been all or since last Thursday apparently, trying to sell internet and telephone to random people that walk past. And it's pissing people off apparently. And people are actually avoiding going into the drugstore so they don't get harassed by them, which is understandable. So they're, at the moment, you know, they're generating a loss for a local store because they're scaring people off. Because they won't take, no, they're one of those sorts of salespeople that won't take no for an answer. You actually have to ignore them and walk off. And then they wonder why people are actually being rude to them. Because apparently one of someone that walked past and uh, ignored the questions heard one of them say how rude. But uh, it's just as rude to me trying to uh, intimidate people into buying the product, which is what they're doing. Uh, and they're the only company I know of that have done this. Um, they're Sky. Plus Net, British Telecom, they all rely on TV adverts. TV adverts and special offers, you know, to keep current customers and to get in new customers, you know. So the fact that TalkTalk Talk are sending salespeople out into the streets to set up to try and sell their products, you've got to ask yourself, why is a company that desperate? I mean, I haven't had one for a while, but it was, for quite some time, I was getting a letter from Talk Talk once a month, trying to get me to, uh, you know, swap to them. Usually, I never bothered opening them, I just put them straight in the bin, because that's all it was, it was just a sales letter. Come join for us today, you know, blah, 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 special offer. 
Plus six months free or something. No, I'm happy with British Telecom. Yes, I know I'm paying for a service through one of the most expensive providers we have over here. But I can't complain. I've been with them about six years now. It will take a month or two. And uh, I've had a grand total of three problems. First one, they cut me off just a few days before my bill was even due before they'd even released the bill. <laughs> so that was a computer glitch which one phone call for probably about ten minutes if I can't, you know, waiting in the queue time with the music playing down your logo. Uh, yeah, about half an hour after that I was reconnected. Uh, then quite some time after that and quite some time I mean years I couldn't access the internet one evening and uh, I was on the phone for 30 minutes yes he was Indian I know a lot of people don't like talking to Indians because they find you know it's hard to understand them and they don't always understand you but this guy was alright yeah he had the accent but he spoke damn good English we could understand each other clearly so that's all that mattered to me I don't care where he comes from <laughs> If he understands me and help me, I don't care. <laughs> he could be a spaceman from bloody planet Mars for all I care. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was sorted quick. That turned out to be settings with the actual hub itself. And the third problem was just a fault on the system, on their side, on the line. Um, because if you, there's an, I can't remember the number, but you can dial a three digit number and it will actually tell you if there's a fault in your area. So I presume they have like big servers for the internet in certain, you know, different parts of the country. <coughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. Just those three problems. I've not had any touch wood. Um, any um, problems with the router itself so we'll say that for BT they do supply a decent router I know some people have had problems but it's like anything you're going to get a dodgy one in the pack aren't you here and there no matter what the quality is Because all it's going to take is that one dodgy component that's gone undetected and that's uh, buggered up one of them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can't complain. So that's why I've stuck. I don't want to move. Because I'm happy. Anyway. Sure, I just heard a bike lock up on the gravel outside. A lot of cyclists can't resist doing it. Right, there's no coming up to 9.45. Oh, my dad's just messaged me back, a bit delayed. Don't blame it on his age. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I can't think of anything now, so I'm going to turn the video off. I'll turn the camera off, shut it down, whatever. Nemo's asking for some food as well. Thank you, buddy. Okay, so he just moved his lips, but no meow came out. It was just a... <laughs> Perhaps he's got a volume control on him. I'll go sort his dish out in a minute. Uh, so tomorrow, I'm gonna make a bike day. I think I'll get the uh, red Apollo done and photographed. Change that rear derailleur. 
something else I had to do and I can't remember what the fudge it was. Change that rear drain, reconnect the brakes. So I haven't done that yet. Because obviously I'll disconnect them and take the wheels out when I put it in the car. And when Mum dropped me off, all I did was put the wheels back in and wheeled it through to the back. Uh, seat post clamp, that was the other thing. I've got to change that when I cut it off with a hacksaw. Uh, so it's just those two jobs to do. I'll check the condition of the seat post. I'll either clean it up or swap it. I've got something here a bit better if I need it. Um, uh, pardon me. That's partly from drinking soda and partly because I've got some serious heartburn. I always get the burps when I get heartburn. That's why I'm sucking on an antacid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was actually sucking on one of these la was it last night or the night before? And I forgot it was there. I just tucked it up between my cheek and my jaw. I totally forgot it was there. Fuck I got stuck to my cheek. <laughs> I actually didn't think I was gonna get it off. Right. What else have I got to do? I've told my friend I've bought that three speed bike back home for his mum. I've just got to get it set up. Uh, I'm feeling up to it after I've pissed around with that Apollo because it might put me in a mood. <laughs> Again. I actually got that pissy with it yesterday at mum's. I actually threw the um, derailleur across the garden. <laughs> I had to go and get it. Yeah, I did sort of uh, throw a hissy fit at it yesterday. <laughs> it was a waste of time, really, because that derailleur was um, twisted. I might as well have just waited until I got it home, but never mind. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, sort my friend's mountain bike out as well. I don't know if his mum wants to just do a straight swap. I forgot to ask him earlier. Uh, I've got a guy coming to pick up his... There's a specific name for it, I can't remember it. One of those trolley things that you pick up furniture or sacks and whatnot. I know it as a sack barrow, but there is another trolley. Is that a trolley? I'm sure you know what I mean. You've got to pick that up. You want to see if I could fix it, but it's going to cost just under £20 per tyre so for that you know plus a five of my way for my time you might as well go at QD's round the corner and buy one for £22 that's all they are brand new <laughs> so if I had the cash I'd buy myself one because they're bloody useful things to have And I think I will ask him tomorrow, but he, he was going to have uh, my yellow containers as well. Anyway, I'm going to shut the camera down. I might play a bit of GTA later. I've got what I want to do tomorrow all in my head ready. Um, So we should be good to go. Right. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.